Hey guys, it's Chris once again, and we're doing another Smart Home Stuff video. Today, we are going to be installing a GE uh, Z-Wave Smart Switch. GE Smart Switch, uh, what is it? It allows you to use your phone, or in my case, my Wink app, to control uh, some Z-Wave devices. I prefer Z-Wave over Zigbee and Wi-Fi because of the way it talks. A Z-Wave switch, and we'll go over the add-on for a three-way in a minute. A Z-Wave switch works like this. If this device is connected to your Z-Wave hub, and this device might be farther away from the Y or the, the Z-Wave Wi-Fi signal or its a smart hub, well, this will look for the closest Z-Wave device and say, hey, can you tell me where I go? Oh, you go here, and there you go. They're linked through another device. So they kind of mesh throughout your home. If you have devices that are far away from your Wink Hub, mine is in the basement on the wall, plugged into my router, which my home Wi-Fi is part of, but it's on Ethernet. So I want to do Z-Wave and don't have to worry about losing Wi-Fi signal and having it off the resetting it and and whatever I've had so many problems with iHome devices losing Wi-Fi and they're not available or they don't always work great and you gotta unplug them and replug them I have never had a problem with any Z-Wave product ever so let's look at the standard replacement unbox for just a regular GE smart switch so it has a little plastic thing at the top here, like this knife. Frost Cutler. I fell for a QVC ad on television years ago. So for a standard outlet, let's see what we got. You have some instructions, some multi-language instructions. and the switch. Now you can tell by the size of the switch it is significantly wider. So make sure that you have the room inside of your panel and you should when you remove your cover and we'll go do this live so we can see. We're going to do it on these overhead basement lights here in my basement. This switch doesn't have a a regular rocker type. And it'll tell you what each one does like here, you can see this is load, this one, oops, load, this one is traveler, which would be your red wire, this one here is your neutral, and this is your line. So line would always be your 120 volt current, load is the device, and your neutral, and then a ground down here. That's it for a standard replacement. We are not going to be using this because this switch currently is not a three-way. You do not need to use your traveler wire, and you probably won't have one on a standard. So here we are at my basement light switch, and please disregard the crustiness, it's a semi-finished basement. We're gonna remove the four screws that hold in my panel and hope that the paint is not sticking to the plate. So you can tell here, this is the switch for the lights, as you can tell, watch. You can barely see on the camera. In the basement, this is the overhead light in the hallway to the stairs above. This is a standard thin switch. So what I'm going to do now, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the power off to the basement lights. So the power's off. There's no power on either outlet. I'm going to remove the screws. Damn it. Okay, I'm going to remove the screws with the right big Phillips screwdriver here. Normally I have a powered screwdriver to do this. So we're going to pull all these out. And what you're going to see on here are three wires. A load, a line, and a ground. So right here is your ground. right? And we're going to remove that. ground, and then you're going to have a load and a line, but look in here, 
you're going to see a bunch of whites. And that is your neutral. And you're going to see here, there's a red, because this is a three-way switch. So, in your package, you will receive a little white wire. And that little white wire will basically go on here and we'll use for the power on the new device. And even comes with two new screws for the wall plate on here. One of these is load and one of these is line. Well, how can you tell? Normally it's silver and black or a silver and different color screw and sometimes you can look on here and it'll tell you which is which usually on the back I mean the line line load load is this one Whoop. line will be that one if you're unsure what you can do is you can turn your power back on and put a multimeter on these devices to see which one has 120 volts and we'll do that so I've gone ahead and turn the power back on and right now I have the lamp in the off position now I know because this is only a two-way switch that this one is my line or this one will have 120 volts AC current and this one will have nothing when the switch is in the off position when the switch is moved to the on position the 120 volts from the line transfers to the load which is your device you're trying to power so with the light switch in the off position I'm going to put this here. You should be able to see it. We're going to touch the ground on the ground. Try and do this one handed. Touch the red to this. You see how this line has 123.2 volts here? This one has nothing. When I flip this switch on, this switch will now have 122.5 volts, and this will still be powered from the house power. When I turn this off, this has nothing, so I know that's my load, and this has the 120, and that is my, well if I can touch the ground there, and that is my line. So I'm going to go turn the power off again and remove my ground. So the power has been removed, and now again, you can turn on and off, it doesn't matter, it's dead. Turn the line off. I'm going to remove my ground again, and we're going to remove my load. Take a flathead screwdriver on this model, put it in here and it will release the line. Put it in here and it will release the this is load. And you can mark these if you need to. So my line will go over here, my load, and here's my neutral. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to undo the little jumper wire. And you're gonna notice it has a longer side. Where are we at? A longer side and a shorter side. Long and short. We're going to use the longer side to jumper this wire here, which is my neutral. Under your wire tie, plop this sucker in, in the thing, and you can wrap it around if you want. It will squish all up and replace your wire nut. So now we have a line, a neutral, a load, and a ground. On your smart switch here, you're going to see you have a line, a load, we're not using this one, the ground is down here, and our neutral. So it's just self-explanatory. Pop it in. This is the neutral. We're going to tighten up the screw. That's in. We know that this is my line. Line will go into line and we will tighten up the screw this one says load we know this is the load just goes in and tighten up the screw and then rah, we have a ground on the bottom which is not my favorite but what they do is instead of wrapping it around I like to snip this off and do a straight in like the other ones. There's plenty of copper in here. I'm just going to snip this off to get the bend out from the original installation. And then you can just slide this in rah, and then tighten up the screw. So it's all like the rest of them. The screws come 
set in their open position so it wouldn't. And there you go. And now we're going to tuck all this back in here and put the screws in that are included with the device. So line them up to your block before you go tighten them down. I have to be careful because these are those plastic blocks. Not like the, the good old ones back in the day that were metal, but you could get shocked on them, so you did something incorrectly. Now you'll notice that I still have enough room to put another switch in if I wanted to do the single light bulb three-way that is at the top of the stairs. But I don't care about that one because this is the only one that I can't get to. Holy moly. Note to self, always use your power tools when you can. What takes seconds? Whoop, sorry, got my arm in the way there. Now this device will work without the app or linking it just as a normal switch would. So we're going to go ahead and turn the power back on. So the power has been restored. I'm going to turn off my shop light here. Or my whatever light. Studio light, if you want to call it. And these are a toggle and it will make a clicking sound. Listen. The lights are on. The lights are off. Here, look. So here's my half unfinished basement. Clicking. On back to the original plate with the regular screws at which time you can then align your switch left or right if you need to. It does come with two screws which you should use on that because they're shorter. These screws are much shorter in thread than these. So I'm going to use the two that were on my original switch because it has the depth to hold them. I'm going to take a quick snap and then we're going to have this linked to my Google Home through my Wink app and we'll uh, I'll show you a neat trick. Okay so we're back and I added the switch uh, it's just basically hit add a, out, add a switch, choose General Electric turn the switch on and off a couple times and then I can go click and I can touch the app again and then come on. Now here's the neat part if you have a Google Home and you'll see that this device is not in my Google Home list, right? So in the basement, there's four devices. Well, the basement speaker and the lights. So my basement light, computer light, game light, TV light. But I don't have the basement overhead lights. Well, instead of unlinking and relinking everything, quit and go, Hey Google, synchronize my devices. You got it. Syncing devices for Wink and Nest. Just like that. Now I can go back into my Google Home. Living room not. Okay. So basement overhead lights. I touch this and I add it to a room and I say basement. Next. Device has been added to your room. So we'll go basement. Now basement overhead lights. Hey Google. Turn off the basement overhead lights. Okay, turning off the basement overhead lights. Hey Google, turn on the basement overhead lights. Okay, turning the basement overhead lights on. Thumbs up from me. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a great one.